Today we are going to be talking about none other than the smart money concepts and the ICT trading. This has been a latest uh, blog post I published uh, around a month ago on the website. Uh, you can see basically a link down here uh, so you can read the whole thing on the blog as well basically. Uh, this made a little bit of a <laughs> um, uh, reaction, you know, from ICD him himself, who got extremely butthurt and felt uh, very attacked by this. But a lot of SMC traders as well, you know, I got some very nasty DMs <laughs> and stuff like that, basically. Uh, but I think overall, you know, I, I kind of stand, stand behind this, uh, what you will see in this, in this video and what you could read in the article is very kind of a, uh, not really biased, uh, description of things and, uh, it's just my explanation or I, I, I <laughs> I'm saying my explanation, but overall explanation of how markets actually work, you know, this is not something that uh would be uh something that i personally made up you know this is generally how markets work so uh let's just jump into this basically uh first of all you know if you go to the tradingroutecom slash bootcamp uh you can um you can find there basically a over 10 hour long course which covers all these concepts to much bigger details uh shows how personally i trade you will get access to a lot of updates that I publish weekly, you will get access to the Discord group as well. And it's only on one time payment, you know, there are not any monthly subscriptions or anything like that. Or if you want uh, some free content, then you can go to the tradingroutecom slash blog. You know, there is over two years worth of kind of blog post that I wrote about trading and everything. So there's quite a bit of stuff there as well. Uh, once again, I will mention this um, in... Uh, the beginning so uh this is just my kind of a personal explanation of the markets if if you are really get angry by this and if you are part of this huge cult that was made around the smc or icd traders you can be as angry as you want i don't really care uh <laughs> so yeah anyway let's let's just kind of jump into this um so first of all you know if you are not aware which uh you know at this point you must basically live under under the rock because you know this this like i said has been extremely popular you know everyone is a smart money trader nowadays anyway uh the overall strategy is just price action based strategy and it's based on assumption that there is this kind of hidden hand causing every move in the market uh it's you know market makers algorithm you know whatever kind of fits this criteria but basically yeah it's built on this assumption that even if you're going to take a look on one minute charts uh you know you will see this kind of manipulation and uh basically if you think about it you know you can't really be serious if you if you will tell me that someone is sitting in a bank with metatrader 4 open and hunting your stops on one minute chart basically uh the smart money concepts uh, came from teachings of ict and uh, this is where I would say the biggest issues come from, uh, because it's the SMC trading is very often promoted as kind of trading this one minute chart and having, you know, very extreme risk to reward trades, uh, and something that, you know, I mentioned in the, in the blog itself. And although ICT got extremely hurt by this, this is solely the SMC thing, you know, ICT never really mentioned this in his teachings as at least from what I have seen, you know, I have watched some of his videos uh, about risk management and everything. They are actually quite solid. So, so yeah, this this is basically the, uh, the, the kind of a worst part of, of the whole trading idea. But I will cover this in a little bit. So if you're going to take a look at the price action chart, you can see here, you know, this is generally the... Uh, the idea that that kind of comes from it that you have some levels these levels are uh, horizontal support and resistance and also trend lines uh, where you have some liquidity resting and basically the market makers will push the price to the high around the stop of the retail traders uh, that you know generates liquidity and market sells off from there and i will in a little bit you know explain to you what is behind these moves in in a little more detail so just stick around and uh, you know like it's the overall idea is much more boring than this but but people just feel like people just want to be part of this kind of a cool um 
cool team and overall the the whole idea of of the liquidity trading and and uh these these all these words came from chris lorry which uh even ict mentions in some of his videos so if you never heard about chris lorry you can go look at on on youtube uh there are quite a few of his free webinars as well when you if you are familiar with this type of thing then you will be familiar you you know it will all sound a little bit uh too kind of a similar so um the issue the biggest issue with um the overall trading idea once again behind the smart money concepts are that are absolutely unrealistic and you know and when it comes to trading you really need to have uh realistic expectations so um if you see someone you know promoting that they are making 10r from each trade uh obviously this means that uh, the r is one unit of risk so if you are risking thousand dollars on each trade and you will make from that trade three thousand dollars you know you are making a three r trade so uh smc traders aim for over 10 r trades and promote that as kind of a realistic result that is that's something you can basically do on a daily basis and since these trades are taken on one minute chart you know there is a quite a high trade frequency you know you will get at least uh one trade a day in the market even more basically so um a lot of times you will see people who trade this way say that you know you don't need to may have a high win rate for this you know um, i have seen people saying that you only need the 10 percent win rate to to make money this way this is true obviously and i will show you in in the equity simulators in a little bit but uh in in kind of a real real life trading this is not a something that you will be able to sustain maybe if you will start and have a really small account but once your money will grow uh this is very all this is basically in my opinion you know psychologically almost impossible to to do if you will be really managing a larger amount of money anyway and also one of the things that these people absolutely ignore in uh, the basically all cases is they they are not factoring in spreads cost and slippages which you know in the forex world you know you can get slipped you you will you can get you know taken by the spread and everything these things needs to be factored in for anyone who they trace basically and you know i just see them completely ignored all the time so if we are going to take a look at uh, something like this, this is just a simple, simple example of this uh, risk to reward concept. You know, like I said, you know, you will basically enter to the short trade in this area. Your stop will go above the high. You are risking, uh, you are risking thousand uh, dollars. You know, so if the trade goes to your stop, you know, you will lose thousand dollars. And if the trade hits your target, which for whatever reason would be here, you are making a uh 3k basically so this is a three uh three to one you know reward to risk or you know three r so just extremely simple explanation of the risk reward concept if you will go to my website there is a blog called uh, risk management it's probably the longest one i ever published and you will learn all these kind of basics if you never heard of them and trade taking trades on like this it's completely fine you know you have kind of a realistic target you know let's say that you are targeting this kind of a next level of support you know after we failed to break above the resistance you know nothing wrong with that you know making a 3r nothing unusual but once uh, something that you will very often see from all the smc traders is something like this basically you know this these are often one minute charts you know some people even go and post like second charts or whatever and you can see that uh for example in here you know the this is basically your distance from the the stop to the target makes it you know three to one i'm not exactly sure how much is this basically but you know this could easily be like 20 to one and this let's say you know this, this is like 15 to one for example so basically this guy right here i i deleted his instagram where i found this uh, screenshot is basically telling you that in this one session in one move i'm not exactly sure if this is one minute chart but looking how kind of these candles are thin in in these areas and overall 
uh, this press action, this is very likely a one minute chart basically. So he's basically telling you that in a span of, this could be like one or two hours, this guy made around, you know, uh, 30 to 40 times his risk. So basically he made like 30 to 40 percent of his whole account, which, you know, is just insane and not very realistic. So, uh, and another thing we can just very easily validate this because if we are going to look at the equity curve simulator, you know, starting with 10,000 10, euros, uh, let's say, you know, you will win uh, every, you know, you will win 50% of your trades, you are, your risk to reward ratio is 10 to 1, uh, basically over the uh, 500 trade period, which, you know, if you are trading on one minute chart, this can take you a year, you know, easily, if you are getting at least two, two trades a day, uh, you basically made this amount of money right here. I am not going to even attempt to read how much is this, but, you know, you are definitely the richest person in the world by the, at the end of the trading year. Um, here is the another example of the 10 to 1 risk to reward ratio with uh, this argument where people basically tell you that, oh, but you only need to win, you know, 10 or 20% uh of the trades you take and okay this is still valid you know you still turned ten thousand euros to whatever this number is basically by the end of the year the issue with this is this thing right here you have 38 consecutive losers and if you think that you can sit here every day uh or just during any kind of trading period and if you think that you can sit in front of your computer and take 38 losers in a row uh without this completely not you know kind of affecting you at all you know i think it's it's not really a possible thing obviously if you are trading with thousand dollars you know you are kind of have not much to lose basically but once once your account is you know 100 or several hundred thousand you know dollars then you know good luck sitting in the 38 uh consecutive losers basically um and the last example and this is kind of the most uh you know 50 percent win rate uh, two and a half uh 2.5 to 1 risk to ratio and you can see the image is a little bit cropped here uh, unfortunately, but still you can see the results over uh, 500 trades are more than great, you know, so you should really be aiming for something more realistic uh, the, and this strategy, which we can see even here because there is a 50% win rate as well, still has 14 consecutive losers. So you will still, uh, you know, have quite a bit of a hard time. There is a high likelihood to uh have you know 14 losers in a row but basically your risk of ruin is much lower uh and your maximum drawdown is much lower than you know if you will aim for something unrealistic basically like this so um this is this is the issue with with the strategy as well um and in terms of these spreads and slippages and costs, basically, uh, this is the Bitcoin chart. This is one minute chart of Bitcoin. And you can see that you have this kind of a SMC type setup. Uh, you take out the liquidity above the highs, you know, make this kind of structural break. So, and you know, this is your candle that, that took out the high. So very, uh, kind of makes sense to to go short basically here on the retest of this of this candle right here and um the stop loss on this trade is basically around 27 dollars which is uh around 0.13 percent from your entry and even if a very small account here you know since you are basically only risking 27 dollar move in the btc price you need quite a large position uh, size, basically. Uh, if uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to, for example, and even if you have a bigger account, so this kind of comes to the example from the blog is is for those people who trade with a little bit more money. 
if you are risking thousand dollars per trade uh, to make this uh, position you know worth of basically your thousand dollars of risk right if, if your stops get hit you will need to uh, sell 37 Bitcoin uh, this will at this uh, 20,287 price which is equal to 750,600 uh, dollars basically so you are going short you know 37 Bitcoins and in this case the trade is not going to work out um, and we can see if we are going to move a little bit this is the level where your stop loss got hit um, in here, you know, basically above above the high, you know, you had your stop loss. Uh, and if you are going to take a look at footprint, and if, if this is something that you never used before, basically it shows you how many orders were traded um, at each price, you know, inside the candle. Um, your since you having your since you are short and you have a stop loss above the high, you are uh, this this order is a buy stop order basically. So you can see uh, in this area that you are and you are uh, short you know 750k basically so uh, once the market hits your stop loss you are not gonna you are not going to get out and at this price you predetermined because as you can see you know 127k traded here 23k 98k 2.66 only 612 uh, and 253k 97k basically the Seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar position size will get filled around this area right here, and this you know seems small. This is only um, this is only few dollars worth of you know slippage. Basically, it's around ten dollars. So if you are once again losing a trading a small account, you know uh, that's that's not kind of a huge issue. But if you are risking a thousand dollars on this trade, you got slipped. 0.3 percent uh on the on the kind of whole stop area and this would result in additional 300 dollars loss so as you can see from your original you know one r which should be one percent two percent whatever you actually lost 1.3 r on this trade so once again you know something that people don't know uh so something that people completely ignore when it comes to smc trading you know is this kind of factoring in slippage spreads and cost and i'm not mentioning even how much you will pay to the exchange basically for uh the trade you know basically the round trip uh will also you know result in some fees so in reality you know your one hour risk is mo more like 1.5 basically and if you think this is, uh, you know, something that happens, you know, very rarely, uh, you know, try to trade through any kind of news events or uh, areas where the liquidity gets much thinner. And this is just an illustration, basically, what I always kind of try to tell people. Uh, you should be really aiming for this type of equity curve when you are trading. You know, trading by itself is very hard and it takes a lot of time to kind of build an account and be consistent and really have this as your kind of profession so you really should your equity curve should really be this very slow grind to the upside rather than you know huge swings over and over again where your risk of ruin of your whole account is much bigger than basically if you will aim on something like this um Let's let's talk about the market making for a second because obviously the market making and the market makers are kind of a key of of the strategy. You know the markets are moved because because market makers manipulate the prices and you know they are, they are hunting stops. There is this huge algorithm thing going on and everything. Um, but this is completely you know false and if you don't believe me just try to kind of google around uh what market makers do you might find a videos on on youtube you know some interviews with market makers the only job of the market maker is to provide liquidity and get paid spread for their effort and uh, most importantly, the market making is the delta neutral strategy. If you don't know what that is, uh, delta neutral is basically um, the type of trading strategy where you uh, are making money uh, without being dependent on the market movements. And there are many ways to do it. You know, there are carry trades, market making. You know, a lot of, lot of different ways to do it in crypto. 
But you know, the, the market makers don't really care about which way the market is going. What is important for them is to provide a liquidity and how market making works in the most kind of simplified way. Uh, you have a market maker, you know, this is your bid and ask price. You have a mid price in here, which is where market trades. Uh, and they are just offering the liquidity, you know, they will offer one contract in at the ask, you know, they will get filled by the market order. Uh, they collect, you know, one point in here, then they will go this one contract bid. So they will get one point here. These two contracts obviously go against each other. So they are flat again and they just do this thing back and forth and collecting this, uh, the mid price, the spread from people who are, uh, using this more aggressive approach and just hitting the market order basically. Um, obviously in the real world this is more complicated because because market makers often accumulate uh, inventory on the one side, uh, they need to offload but overall they may their main goal is to be delta neutral, you know, uh, be flat in the perfect scenarios basically. So if you are going to take a look at DOM, um, this is the screenshot from the depth of market and you know this is your kind of a bid ask prices here what is what is offered uh, on on the bid ask uh, and these orders are very very often uh, put there by by the market makers basically and they just really do this thing back and forth they are collecting the spread and one last thing one last example these are the euro stocks once again you have your depth of market here and you can see that at the 300, uh, 3516 you have 464 contracts to buy uh, which is this blue number and uh, at uh, 3517 you have 455 contracts to sell and uh, if you decide to market buy or market sell you know you will basically take this kind of one point from it if you if you do it with, with one contract and but you will be crossing the spread so basically if you um if you are sitting here at a bit you know and uh, you will you will buy um you will buy sorry i'm uh, you will buy this one contract from uh, and you will basically take one contract from this 455 that is sitting at the offer. What will happen that you will instantly kind of start with a one take uh, loss in, in this case. So this is why this is the difference between basically using a market or limit orders, you know, and this this being topic of many other articles and videos I made. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, how market makers make money because obviously they, they sold to you this one contract. You were impatient, so you just crossed the spread. You had to pay for it you know you are one take down immediately because you use the market order and the market makers you know because this price haven't moved so they just made this one tick from you basically and you know they now just will be offloading that inventory so it's a very simple concept uh how market makers make money i don't know why this was ever used to to make any kind of mysterious <laughs> idea behind it but yeah it is what it is uh, obviously, if you are small retail traders, you know, paying spread, which in Euro stocks is 10 euros uh, for one take on one contract is something you can live with. If you are trading 100 or 1000 contracts, you know, it gets a little bit of tricky. That's why the larger traders and overall large players often prefer using limit orders or some kind of advanced order types, basically. So uh, you will often hear things like uh, liquid and so i'm sorry the last point that i forgot to mention there is no doubt there is a manipulation in the market and uh like i said no one is sitting at one minute chart running your stops on your you know 0.1 lot you are trading you know uh some euro yen cross you know on on the b book broker you know you need to be you just need to can think about the whole concept a little bit and it's it's really not uh too surprising that it is doesn't make sense but on the other hand you know there is definitely manipulation across all the markets if you google uh, forex scandal uh you will end up on a wikipedia page where you can read uh, how how banks actually manipulated the the 
these spreads and uh, their, my, uh, their uh, clients money but once again it's very different from what you will what you will kind of hear from the smart money traders or whatever another another thing you often kind of see is the liquidity and order flow um, this is very inaccurate because uh, the the ICT smart money whatever traders they don't look at these things you know this is this is your liquidity and order flow these these tools are showing you what the liquidity and order flow of the market is and this is not something you can get from the simple price action chart so so overall use of these terms is wrong although you know um, it's just a term like it's not not such a big deal but you know it's not mm, if you if you see smc trader talking about uh order flow you know it's very different than what the real order flow is basically and uh what well, real order flow is it studies the relationship between limit orders which are the liquidity and the market orders uh this is typical kind of a smc type of order flow you know market is in downtrend this is I don't know why this is called order flow, but yeah, you will see the bearish order flow is because you know market is going down basically. Um, and this is kind of your I hate to use this word, but this is your real order flow where you can take a look at the depth of the market and you see that uh, the, the numbers in the blue column are the resting orders you know willing to buy, um, and the numbers in the red column are the resting orders willing to sell, and these middle. And these middle numbers are basically the contracts that got actually traded in between. And it's it's much more into this. I'm not going to be covering uh, this in this video. Uh, but yeah, this is what the real order flow is all about. Um, the liquidity, you know, once again, key concept of SMC ICD trading. Uh, it is explained as the areas where retail traders place their, their stops. Uh, these are often manipulated to take them out before the move. They are found at horizontal and diagonal SR levels. You know the, uh, and this is not completely wrong. Uh, the stop hunts. You know you can see there is there are quotes here because there is I don't really believe there is anything like hunting stops. These are just kind of normal moves in the market. But you know these these happen and you can definitely make a strategy around these. But they often have very different kind of a reasons for, for the overall moves. Uh, and it all comes down to, to the order flow, to the real order flow and how, how basically the market participant, you know, uh, behave at these levels because you can see once again, kind of a typical SMC ICD type of chart, you know, liquidity resting above the high, it's, there is a liquidity grab, liquidity below the trend line, you know, taken, uh, whatever. But if you if you really look into these market movements, you will very often find that this is not uh, what is actually happening. Uh, you cannot uh, and you simply cannot uh, contribute everything to the stop hunt because first of all, the reaction at these levels happen because they are very obvious to a lot of people and they will always bring participation because you know a lot of people are trading very different, very similar ways and even people who use something like fundamentals and they are trading only on higher time frames they still very often and if this is once again you can verify this by you know reading some books or interviews with with kind of a larger fundamental traders you know they still use this these kind of simple price action concepts to structure their trades because even though you know fundamentals are the are the drivers of the prices you know you still can need to structure your trade some some somehow basically so if you are going to take a look at this this is basically the most simple you know smc ict type trades one once again you have these support lows you have a liquidity grab below it markets run, run away from there so the overall idea of this trade you know market makers whatever manipulation you know pushing the price down taking out the stops you know running way higher uh if we are going to take a look at this chart right here, which is the footprint chart, and if you don't know what that is, once again, you can go to the blog, read about it, or even on this YouTube channel, you will find a video about the footprint charts. 
Uh, this is basically showing you the large market orders coming to the market. Uh, this, this one is called filtered footprint. So it only shows orders above 50 contracts, I think, which is, which are, uh, which is basically a 50 lot in the Euro USD. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a decent size basically or whatever. Um, and you can see it here, you know, uh, basically here you have the low, uh, the support area, and you can see that the aggressive selling pressure is basically coming to, to this level right here. And, uh, if this would be just a stop hunt, then basically you would see, uh, a lot of numbers lighting on this side right here, because the left side on the footprint show you the sell orders the right side on the footprint is showing you the buy orders and if you are in a long position and market hit your stop loss it's converted to the uh, sell stop position basically so if this would be really a case of the stop run then you know you would see a lot of numbers here uh, but for this case for this example we came down here and there were a large buyers basically using this aggressive selling pressure to fill their orders and market move based on that. So, uh, and this is something you will only see if you will really just use these order flow tools basically. But I just use this example as kind of a demonstration that this is, you know, that not every move past the horizontal SR or whatever is basically a stop run, you know, this is just a two-way auction of the market you know the supply and demand basically where you have a large amount of sellers above the level that they are trying to you know force the breakdown uh there is someone who is willing to buy from them so obviously if you will if you are only trading in one lot or even less it's you know you can execute basically whatever you know it's it's not an issue to just you know buy one lot and you won't get slipped on anything but if you want to buy 133 lots or, you know, 97 lots or, you know, any kind of a more significant number, then you need to do it in the area where the, there is a high liquidity, where there is a high participation. And this will happen below these very obvious, you know, horizontal support and resistance levels. There is, everyone sees them, you know, people want to force the breakdown, uh, people, you know, want to go long and under these levels you will often find a high liquidity where just a lot of contracts are changing hands and in this case you know someone really tries to force the breakdown but he was met with the another buyer or large amount of buyers that aggressively you know bought into those offers you know you can see it on the right side and market just really from there um once again you know this is the heat map uh there is quite a few issues with with this you know although this is some something that a lot of people used uh but whatever for simplified purposes you have a level of support right here if you just look at the simple price action chart you know once again you have move under the support stops were taken we go from there you know easy peasy uh if you look at the order flow you have a large bid resting in here this is kind of a this lighter green area this is a some some buyer wanted to get filled market moves through that they get filled in and this is in this thing right here market immediately stop you know you have a little bit more buying here market reverse from there so there was not not really a stop run there was just someone willing to buy under the level and they defended their prices okay so uh and i hope you can just see how different and how more logical this thing is you know it's a little bit more boring you know no hidden hand or whatever but you know this is how really the market move uh another ict concept uh the accumulation manipulation the distribution you know power of three uh it's the same thing you know uh obvious levels you know people obviously there, there will be stops you know resting of the people who were buying inside this but once again these areas just kind of create um zones where there is enough liquidity for people to take in place you can see if we are going to plot and this, these are crude oil futures by the way if we are going to plot the volume profile on this whole down move basically you can see there is a large volume distribution in this area so a lot of people are changing hands uh, some stops are taking definitely people try to force the breakdown and people 
with the bigger kind of inventory are buying into them and you can see it once again here on footprint uh there is there are no stops triggered basically this uh, there is aggressive selling to the level of people once again forcing a breakout once we hit the lows You don't see any stops taken and you can see uh, Stops in footprint if there would be strings of zeros basically and you have only one here, but if th there would be stops taken you would have um, You know the strings of zeros basically uh, on the one side and just numbers on the on the second side but but you can just see that market you know people tried to force the breakdown market went under the low and now you have this kind of two-way auction which large buyers using the selling selling pressure to fill the buy orders and you have these buy imbalances basically all over the place uh you have these kind of chunks of volumes basically build it at the lows and the buyers were just kind of a uh, more aggressive you know willing to buy willing to absorb all the selling and market reverse from there so nothing really to uh not for any kind of hidden concept but simple simple supply and demand basically ideas uh, the order flow the supply and demand blocks uh once again you know extremely popular even outside of ict smc trading uh, you know a lot of people trading supply and demand uh, idea of this smart smart money smart money filling their orders uh to kind of play the continuations of trade and this is actually not that far from the truth but once again it's too over complex you know uh, to make it sound much cooler basically um, why these things happen why you get reaction from something like a you know order block if you want to call it you know why why markets just comes here and sells lower is because the large players need to split their orders to get filled without slippage and they do it in areas of high executed volumes and this is not something that i came up with this is explained in the actual research paper called why order flow is so persistent so if you have something like this you know you have a sell-off then you have a pause in price which creates this kind of supply zone in here you know is you have a clear indication of large sellers stepping in within this candle market retrace it continues lower uh, if you're gonna plot a volume profile into this area you will see that in this leg down this was where the most volume was executed so uh, there is this kind of a uh, build up of the selling pressure but a lot of large traders don't have the ability to just execute it at once you know once market sells off they will have some resting orders still in this area market is going to test it it will sell further and this is the research paper I, I mentioned you can just google it uh, you will find the link for it in the original article on my website as well uh, I'm not going to read this thing this is kind of a the most important section from it uh, you can pause the video and read this for yourself basically so yeah this is this is why market reacts from this level not any kind of a secret forces or whatever this is just why things happen and this was and in the research paper you know a lot of things are just covered way more in depth basically fair value gaps um connected to the order blocks you know there are 10 spots in the market showing clear clearly where buyers or sellers stepped in um this is a very old concept this so i i first seen this introduced by Car uh, the para curve uh in 2011 and they are uh, just the areas of the low volumes when really one side got very aggressive and market just moved way too quickly and they are just these inefficiencies in the market if you ever used the volume profiles you 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 could see these low volume areas if you used the market profile they are called single single prints uh it's just all the same thing it's just kind of these inefficient uh moves in price which very often get filled before the continuation there are several types of gaps i'm going to show you this is the original video on the liquidity gaps from 2011 by paracurve so nothing really new here there are different types of gaps you know the common gaps the exhaustion gaps uh and the runaway gaps you you know they can happen at the end of the moves uh but they also can kind of say signal the breakout and if you're going to take a look on the volume profile you will see that you know these are these thin areas in the market and when market kind of goes back 
fills fills it in here you know fix the inefficiency before moving higher uh the market structure you know there is a high emphasis on market structure when it comes to ic trading especially when the structure is broken basically what you see here in this kind of a uh infographic is how any kind of smc trader or ic trader trades uh you know structure broken retest whatever uh it's not a bad thing to use i would say personally but also if you will just be strictly looking at the higher highs and higher lows and just kind of track every higher high and higher low to be broken you know it's it's very uh it's it can be quite confusing basically and you will lose kind of a bigger picture for it you know if you're gonna take a look at something like this you know where you have uh these kind of a longs coming in you know and then you will just kind of lose it in here uh it you know you will lose basically the market structure here you will have your kind of order block or whatever this is this is a break uh, break you will very often find that you are unsure if this is a break of the market structure and price will continue to the downside or if this is just kind of a move to the downside to shake these late longs and we will continue to the upside and once again you know there is a there are a lot of tools that i use personally that will help me to to kind of understand the concept a little bit better you know you can use the volume profile obviously the easiest thing would be to look at higher time frames to try try to kind of find out what's been going on on the higher time frames but even if you will use the something like a volume profile you know it's much easier to uh, to kind of navigate through the markets so the, the market structure itself it's not a bad kind of a indicator or you know how to track the market movements but it can leave you very often confused and you will very often miss kind of a overall move by itself uh one of the last things that i want to cover are time frames you know obviously these sweeps or these kind of a uh, liquidity grabs uh, they are very often uh, set by the rules that the candle has to go under the level and close above it you know so you'll have just a wick uh, throughout the level and if the if the candle closes below below the level this is instantly invalid uh, and people use different time frames for it obviously but the time frames doesn't really matter in trading you know time frame this is something very kind of a um, I I don't know how, how to describe this the best. You know the time frames are just just kind of this thing people people started to put extreme importance to, but it really doesn't matter uh, if you are using you know 20 minutes, 40 minute, 90 minute, 60 minute time frame. You know time frame should be only for you to kind of a fit uh, your trading style uh, with th this understanding that if you will obviously use higher time frames, you will miss a little bit of a granularity uh on the day to day basis but you know time frames for itself it's just kind of a uh personal preference basically so if you can take a look this is euro usd this is 90 minute chart uh the 90 minute chart this candle closed you know very strong below the level it's it's done you know this is going lower i think retraces once again if you're gonna add the 30 minutes to the candle two hour chart you know we have all of a sudden long wake so you know completely different concept you know valid trade all of a sudden market rallies from there uh it all comes back to this you know aggressive sellers trying to force it down by stepping in you know markets rever reversing from there uh so yeah the time frames by itself it's really just a personal preference one more example this is the bitcoin chart um you have a this kind of market structure high basically we close through it um and here in this candle so definitely strong kind of a continuation pattern you know you have your order block here or whatever uh but if you're going to take a look at the footprint chart it's a little bit of a different representation but you will see that there is a large amount of buyers chasing this thing there are large buy orders coming through you know the, the whole candle has a huge amount of buying and you can see that the buying is distributed towards this upside to this p-shape you know uh candle basically here so the minute markets 
pushes back and trades below this huge buy block in here you know all these buyers are in trouble and there is absolutely it doesn't matter if the candle closed uh, throughout the level or wherever the candle closes is absolutely not important and you can see obviously from from kind of this thing and this thing that this just kind of failed and market very quickly reversed through it so once again this is the example of of, of the fact that you had this candle close this is 30 minute chart uh, throughout the level very easy to think this is going to instantly continue but if you will take a look a little deeper inside these candles you will see that you know all these buyers that are buying and forcing the breakout you know the second market trades below them you know they are in huge trouble and they will start to puke their positions which will result in the move to the downside and obviously if you are long and you will close your long this is a, another short coming into the market basically so yeah uh, in conclusion, trading is complicated and you need much more than just strategy to make it. Uh, there is no reason to uh, get hung up on these things in my opinion. You know, you don't, don't need to uh, associate every single move in the market with some deep, complex, you know, explanation and, and trying to be smartest person in the room because, you know, you don't need to be smartest person in the room in trading to make money. Um, in my opinion, uh, ICT provides a solid point and uh, shows repeatable price pr patterns while covering risk management. Uh, the issue comes in overcomplication to make his trading sound cool so people feel like part of the special secret club. You know, if you're gonna take a look at this guy's social media, he's all over himself, you know, uh, which uh, obviously, you know, happens to people that end up building a huge cult followings. It is what it is. I think that uh, some of the things that he talks about uh, make sense. Like I said, you know, I watched some of the uh, the risk management stuff he posts. It's not bad. You know, they he gives a solid advice when he shares the trade uh, on YouTube or whatever, whatever. You know, I see him share some trades a few times. Although there is this huge kind of demo trading thing for with him, but that's maybe for another time uh he doesn't go for you know insane 10 20 r trades um he's just a little bit you know made things a little bit uh, uh too complex and um he i would say that he learned a lot of things from from people like parker you know like chris lore uh who you know give this kind of a much much simpler and more reasonable explanation to things basically uh smc trading is just marketing garbage and demonstrates unrealistic results in the real world uh, i'm sorry if there is anyone who takes these one minute tenar trades uh with uh you know over five six figure account on month to month basis and you have at least uh some record that you can you know really show this is on a live account with your own money feel free to reach out and i will be more than happy to make an apology video <laughs> but yeah uh what the things that you see on instagram that the, the things that you see on on youtube when it comes to smc trading and these unrealistic trades is just terrible thing you really shouldn't be even try to do it because you will just lose the money anyway um like I said, you know, this trading approach created a huge cult following and it is hard to argue with people using it. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's up to you to decide whether you believe it or not. My goal for the video was and for the article I published was just kind of shed light on why markets move. So take it, you know, as you want. And if you are using these concepts they and they work for you and you are able to be profitable with, you know, following risk management, you know, not gambling or anything, you know, then at the end of the day it's it is what it is you know that's what what's the important i'm not going i know uh, i don't know anyone who trades the smc um type of trading you know going from these extreme 10 20 r trades and actually makes money uh but i know quite a few people who trade the kind of a more original ict uh trading style trading strategy whatever although i don't agree with the idea behind the concepts and concepts overall i know and i can kind of verify that they make my money doing it so you know at the end of the day we all come to the markets to to make money and if this works for you then you know 
good for you basically uh, and like I said you know you can visit this link right here you can read the blog there are some things that I uh, haven't mentioned here this is already way too long and if you want to learn how I trade you can pick up the bootcamp or just take a look at what it's all about okay uh, if you manage to stick all the way to the end thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next video